the controversial andhra pradesh microfinance law is set to claim its first victim vijay mahajans bharatiya samriddhi finance limited popularly known as basics india's oldest micro lender is on the verge of a collapse its non performing assets or bad debt has eroded its entire net worth i am with mr mahajan to dissect the crisis thank you mr mahajan for being with us i know it's trouble time thanks for taking your time off tell me your net worth as in june is 128 crore and accumulated losses because of non payment by the uh, <clears throat> borrowers in andhra pradesh is 450 crore which means your net worth is zero minus yes. so what's the future looking like well arithmetically it's not minus today because the 450 crore has to be provided over a period of 2 years yeah. so during that period we have to basically raise that much equity so uh, today in fact we have 16% capital adequacy mm. uh, however <clears throat> anybody who looks at the andhra pradesh situation will not go by accounting formalities but they will say write it off today right and in that sense what you are saying is eminently true that unless we raise about 450 crores worth of new capital the institution is uh, really not uh, likely to be saved so it won't be there i am told for the past 3 months you have been literally with a begging bowl meeting investors across the globe but nobody is ready to give you money is that correct well there have been many many offers of support uh, yeah. some of which are from very large institutions and you know they have their own uh, systems and procedures so they are still working at it mm-hmm. uh, but we haven't had any cash in the bank that i can tell you right uh, so neither as equity nor as any uh, other type of support yeah. so so situation is very grim Great. i mean i'm sorry to hear that but tell me sks microfinance which came much after you and is the only listed company uh, listed company in that space in india now after the center released its draft regulation on microfinance the stock has gone up by 55% right which means there is investors appetite for the for the sk stock but in your case your existing investors are not putting in money why is this so what is the difference between sk and you well first of all you know uh, a listed company stock <coughs> uh, prices yeah. go up and down yeah. uh, indicating investor confidence but please remember that that doesn't bring any additional money into the company yeah. it only changes the price of the investment which is already there uh, so it's neither basics nor sks has raised any new money right it's just that the price at which their stock has been quoted has improved and please remember that it listed at i think 960 and still well well below its its listing price and certainly it's well below 532 yeah and it's still well below the peak price so mm-hmm. in that sense the overall confidence investors have in the sector is far below the peak level that was in say september 2010 you have equity investors very reputed one like ifc washington yes even uh, closer home in india it's sidbi yes what are they saying well they are <clears throat> you know being supportive uh, mm-hmm. they have moved their internal uh, processes to to help us mm-hmm. uh, but i guess you know uh, these are as i said major institutions they they need time to to arrive at a decision mm-hmm. but uh, as the uh, rbi first issued a may 3 circular yeah. that clarified a lot of the air mm-hmm. and now with this draft bill there is a further enhancement in confidence mm-hmm. the thing is that for us it's also a matter of timing mm. so as kane said in the long run we are all dead in our case in the long run we will be fine but in the short run we may be dead you know so mm. it's important that we are uh, you know given this support in the mm. next 30 to 60 days because otherwise uh, you know what happens is right now out of 1000 crores i have 450 crores of impaired portfolio yes in andhra and neighboring districts so i have only 550 from which i have to earn yes. and pay interest on the full 1000 yes now that is not possible uh, you know beyond another month or two months 
and plus you need to also fill in the equity bit because there's a big hole. Oh there, yes, that right? of course. I'm not even assuming that I'll ever be able to do it out of my profits. That is impossible because. So you seem to have given up completely. <coughs> I mean, your body language is. It's. Uh, <laughs> no, right? it's it's not a question of giving up, uh, yeah. but you know, one has to be. Uh, you know, uh, uh, sort of uh, aware of the, the the magnitude of the the thing. The fact is, at the peak, we had a net worth of 230 crores, hmm. and we have a whole of 450. That is twice our net worth. 230 crore was in March. Subsequently, you had to provide yeah. for something. It has gone down to 120 crore. Yes. 28 crore as of June, right? Yes. And. Um, so in the next quarter we'll see some more erosion. So it's a question of time. You are getting into a, into the grave kind of stuff, if I may say so. Well. Sorry for saying this. <laughs> Unless the bankers come to your rescue or uh, some investors, right? You know, my question to you, Tamil, and to the financial community is, what is this all about? Yeah. You know, we can reduce this question to basics or to BSFL. Yeah. But why is it that I've been doing what I've been doing for the last 15 years instead of working for some investment banking firm? Yeah. I've been doing financial inclusion work and before that livelihood promotion work for 30 years now. Right. Uh, and it is, we've, I'm proud of the fact that in the last 15 years we brought, <coughs> uh, you know, microfinance services yeah. to 30 million very poor people in this country. That has been destroyed. For 15 years, I had a repayment rate of 99% plus, including in Andhra Pradesh, mm. including in Bihar, including in Jharkhand. Yeah. I am told your Bihar collection also go coming down now. Well, it's come down from 99 to 97, but it's Marginally. still. But imagine 97% mm. in Bihar. Now mm. we should be applauded by the nation for mm. building a credit culture. Right. You know, and by the way, we have done this without one rupee of subsidy from any government. So now do you think the solution is actually you are looking for a political solution because uh, I think Reserve Bank of India has been telling banks to, to give loan. They are not willing because yeah. nobody wants to pile up bad loans. Yeah. Investors are not very comfortable. So the only way we can find, um, uh, you know, it's, it's a, it's a, it has to be a political solution. Incidentally, both center and state now at this point of time ruled by the same government, Congress government. Right. So why it's not happening? What do you think? Well, you know, if we go by the statements of both the finance minister <coughs> and the economic advisor, and this is not just TV statement, this was mm. written, the budget speech and then the economic survey the day before the budget speech, mm. there's an enormous amount of open support to microfinance institutions. In fact, the finance minister earmarked 100 crores additionally to the microfinance equity fund. Right. So I don't think there's any dearth of conceptual support from the central government. And this is also true of many other people. And the RBI also has clarified that as long as MFIs engage in uh, proper practices, uh, you know, they are a welcome uh, part of the financial sector, important part of financial inclusion. Right. The problem has happened only in Andhra Pradesh because the state government favors the self-help group bank linkage model, which they have been subsidizing down to 3% per annum interest rate. Mm. Whereas the microfinance institution model, because it is self-sustaining, the typical interest rates are in the range of 24%. Right. Now, the fact is, if you compare both the models and look at the actual cost of both the models, it is comparable to 24%. But one is highly subsidized hidden. and the other one is not. Cost is hidden. Right. right. So, the, okay. so, really speaking, it is for mm. our political leaders to decide mm. what do they want short-term patronage or long-term sustainability of financial services for the poor. How hopeful are you of actually that's happening? Well, I know I, you have been trying very yeah. hard. Well, you know, I will not give up hope till the very last moment. And, yeah. uh, you know, I hope that even this airing of this program with you and you, since you are such an influential voice, I hope it will make a difference. Uh, India's policy makers should wake up. But this is not about basics. This is the death knell to financial inclusion in India. Today in Andhra Pradesh, there are 92 lakh poor households who are appearing on the defaulter list of the national credit bureaus. What a wonderful way to welcome them to the world of financial inclusion. You know, 
so we hmm. just cannot just stand by and uh, let this happen this is not about basics i know it's a tough time but i'm sure you'll be able to tide over this crisis thank you for your time thank you namalda